So now uh, I'm going to talk about some theory, right? So I'm going to define what my uh, what would I call a, some safe set or forward invariant set, yeah? And this is defined as C equal to say suppose I define my set using some Notice that I have defined it uh, the other way around, right? Here, if you see my no, I think this is fine, right? I, I have also defined it using 25 minus x1 square greater than equal to 0, 9 minus x2 square greater than equal to 0. Huh? Same thing, h can be an amalgamation of 25 minus x1 square, 9 minus x2 square, right? Same thing, that is the set C. The boundary, like I said, is is basically where hx is exactly equal to 0 and then I have c0 I would say the interior of c is the set of x in Rn strictly greater than 0 ok great. Now so typically if you if you see the way we have been uh, defining these is that we have sort of I mean yeah that's fine I mean in particular cases so the reciprocal barrier function that's what we've just looked at is basically something like say bx is equal to uh, you know something like I guess 1 over hx right. This is how we have been using it, right? It is like 1 over 25 minus x1 square or 1 over 9 minus x2 square, okay? This is how we have been doing, right? And, uh, and what we, uh, the condition we sort of imposed was that b dot is less than equal to 0, okay? Uh, this is the sort of condition we were imposing. Uh, however, uh, we do not need this means it is too restrictive. Yeah, it can be shown that this is again going back to the same idea that everything inside is also being made invariant in some sense, okay. So, uh, we do not particularly need this, alright. So, if you go back to our example also, again if you go back here, if you even in this example, what did we do? We said that v dot is less than equal to 0. Same thing that we do with our typical Lyapunov analysis, right? Not exactly the barrier function, but the Lyapunov analysis, right? So, what does this mean? This means that uh, this set is a square, right? So, if I start uh, inside this square, right? If I started close to the boundary, okay, what will it do? It will make some kind of a set, right? This v is now complicated, by the way. Huh? I can't really make a shape out of it. But this V is complicated. What it will do is it will make a set which is something like this, say for example. It will try to get close to a continuous version of a square basically. Huh? If you started here somewhere, right? But if you started smaller, it will make a smaller square, right? Because that is how the invariant set for the V dot less than or equal to 0 works, right? I, we already saw this. If you start in the inside ellipse, you will remain inside the inside ellipse only, right? You do not have to. Uh, Actually, let me think about it. In this case, would it be true? Actually, it is not very clear if that will be true in this case. Does it mean that the inside set uh, actually depends on how the shape is? Actually, I am not sure, honestly speaking. Yeah, because I have to see the shape, and this will be a good exercise to see ki what is the shape of the level sets that is v equal to constant, what is the shape that you get here? Okay, it is not very obvious to me what the shape will be, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I do not I don't think it is, uh, because this is looking like what this is, is this, can I write this as 25 minus 25 minus x1 square divided by, 
yeah I can write this as 25 minus 25 minus x1 square divided by this. So this becomes 25 divided by 25 minus x1 squared minus 1 and similarly for the other one this becomes 25 over 25 minus x1 squared minus 1 this becomes 9 over 9 minus x2 squared minus 1 right. So it is actually some kind of an ellipse only right some funny kind of a is it is it still no it is not an ellipse right yeah it is not very clear what the shape will be yeah but the sort of point that I am trying to make is as you keep reducing your initial conditions uh, you will get smaller and smaller sets that is the hope I guess right. Uh, you will start getting smaller and smaller sets and the smaller set will become invariant. You, you will not end up exploring the larger set at all because of this condition okay and this is a little bit restrictive again. And this happened why because we took v dot less than equal to 0 this kind of a condition is what we used right. So that is apparently not required this is what some of the research has been apparently all you need is this is what is the relaxation is that b dot is less than equal to gamma over b where I guess gamma is some positive constant okay gamma is some positive constant I, I hope you sort of understand what this equation is doing okay what is it doing it is saying that if you are very far from the boundary okay if you are very far from the boundary what happens to b typically I mean if you look at our barrier function b is some finite value okay it will give you some you know finite uh, sort of decay yeah hopefully it will give you a finite decay I guess let us see um, if I look at this barrier 1 over hx type of case so in our case we are looking at what uh, yeah I am trying to sort of make sense of how this will look for us let us see suppose let us look at our example okay so in our case bx was 1 over 25 minus x1 squared okay. So unfortunately this may not satisfy this condition which is why I am not very sure um, okay let us see what is b dot of x this is uh, 2x1 x1 dot divided by 25 minus x1 squared whole squared correct thank you right okay. no no minus it is a plus okay. that is fine okay that is fine uh, but this is not going to be very obvious how we are doing it no no no, no. this is not very evident but but the rationale for doing this is at least how it is stated here is that uh, the inequality allows for b dot to grow when solutions are far from the boundary okay yeah so basically what this will do is that if x is far from delta c in c naught then uh, then obviously your b is positive right because of whatever how you have constructed it right? b is going to be positive so it is going to be some positive quantity on the right hand side and b is positive right because I took 1 over hx and h is positive in, in the interior right h is positive in the interior in fact it will be more and more positive in the interior right as you go further in the interior it is more and more positive okay that is the definition of the set right. So obviously h is positive 1 over h is also positive okay that is the idea. So if you are in the interior if you start in the interior you your b is going to be positive and so this is right hand side is going to be positive okay. So what am I saying that the derivative is less than some positive number okay. So, so basically uh, b can increase okay because all I am saying is that derivative is less than a positive number yeah? so it can also be positive. So this allows for b to increase what does the increase of b mean? Remember 
B becomes infinity at the boundary for this reciprocal type construction. This becomes infinity at the boundary. So, B increasing means you are going closer to the boundary. Okay, makes sense. So, B can increase implies X moves towards delta C. This is allowed by this construction. Okay, so this was so by this is allowed only in this concept. If B dot was less than or equal to 0, this is not allowed. Because it is always going down or not reducing or it is never increasing. B dot less than or equal to 0 means B is never increasing. Here there is a possibility that B can increase. However, what happens when you go close to the boundary? If x near delta c implies B is large, right? That is how we have defined it. You remember 1 over 25 minus x1 square. If x1 reaches 25, the denominator is exploding, uh, sorry, the denominator is going to 0. So, b is becoming large. Okay? All right? If b becomes very large, what happens to this guy? Almost 0. Almost 0. So, therefore, b dot implies b dot approximately less than or equal to 0. So, B either does not increase or starts to decrease. Okay. So, what is it saying? It is saying basically only this boundary H of X is in effect. The inside boundaries are not you know like in this case I could have remained inside right you know I could have remained inside this and not even gotten here that is not allowed here. Yeah. Here the right hand side is positive for some time. You are allowing some growth inside the set. Okay? But as you start getting closer to the boundary of the set, this growth stops. Okay? This growth stops. Okay? Which means implies x cannot escape c. Yeah? And this can, this is not difficult to show. I mean, these folks have actually shown it. Uh, uh, so, basically how they are saying it is that, so this is the B dot, uh, sorry. So, what is B dot? B dot is equal to uh, minus 1 over H x squared times H dot and if this is less than or equal to gamma over B, this is gamma H, right. So, this condition means that H dot plus gamma h cubed greater than or equal to 0. Yeah, this is what you will get. So, what did I do to get this? this I think it is evident, right? Uh, B is defined as 1 over h x, right? So, B dot is this guy, correct? I think I did it correctly, you can verify. B dot is minus 1 over h x, h, h dot, h x square, h dot and the right hand side is gamma over B and that is this guy, yeah? this is gamma times h, right. So, that gives me this kind of a differential inequality, yeah? this can be solved yeah, using your comparison lemma type results and they have actually solved it, I am going to just write it, uh, h x t x 0 is greater than or equal to 1 over square root 2 gamma t plus 1 over h square at x 0. Okay? Okay, so, so you get this. Basically, just by solving this with initial conditions on x and all that. Huh? Not difficult, right? You can just solve this equ equation. Yeah. Uh, this is a differential inequality. You can just solve the equality and then by the comparison level make it greater than or equal to. Done. So, you will get this solution. Yeah. Yeah, please verify this. <laughs> I am also not sure, but uh, but it is not difficult to see that this is already giving me h greater than or equal to 0, right? Right hand side is positive. Yeah. Right hand side is positive, not a negative quantity. Right. So, this is you are always getting some positive number on the right hand side. 
which means what you are inside c right for all time right so this implies what c is forward invariant okay so this kind of uh, barrier function already did something better than what we did uh, by making b dot is less than equal to gamma or b of course you have to be careful how to choose this b and all and, and how to make it and so those things are not obvious here yeah unfortunately i'm not sure we'll have time to discuss those but but this is how you define a barrier function okay this is the right way that you want this to happen okay not less than equal to 0 yeah that is just too much to ask yeah. if you can enforce this via the control design excellent that would be the best way to go that this happens okay now uh, one final notion yeah that i sort of want to talk about is is basically the notion of uh, which is slightly more than this it is zeroing yeah just a second yeah which this why why are you saying it's negative t is positive no 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 it's the positive square root no 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 don't worry about that it's always the positive square root you can that you can verify in the solutions yeah yeah okay i mean it's a see the basic idea is the continuous the solution is continuous right yeah so <laughs> either you are always positive or always negative okay and at initial time if you are positive there is no point in taking the negative square root no the solutions are continuous so you'll always work with one side only huh? yeah 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 okay all right huh. zeroing barrier functions okay this is what is a little bit more advanced right uh, <coughs> not much okay uh, so sort of the final notion I'll, I'll sort of take a few more minutes and we'll be done yeah uh, here um, even in the previous case uh, if you see um, your your function still became infinity on the boundaries so you can imagine whatever you do whatever these tricks you do to make sure that the inside set does not become invariant and all that great that works but your control might still go unbounded if you start close to the boundary because that's a feature of how you've defined it just like here right control contained this guy you start close to the boundary same deal even there because that is how you defined your barrier function 1 over hx okay. So this is one unseemly un, uh, thing that you want to avoid you do not want the control to become explored as you get start close to the boundary right. So that is where the zeroing barrier functions sort of come in they are defined in a slightly different way uh, let us see I will I will talk about it uh, first we define the notion of a um, extended class k function you already know what is a class k function because it is 0 at 0 and strictly increasing hmm? but the arguments are always taken to be argument of a class k function is also taken to be positive whenever you define a class k function alpha you say that it goes from r plus to r or whatever right? now we do not do that now it is allowed to go from r to r ok. So this is uh, basically the notion of an extended class k. So alpha 0 is 0 and alpha strictly increasing basically negative arguments are allowed ok negative arguments are allowed that is the idea it is not uh, necessary that the argument must be positive because if you remember we always take this class k function as norm of x and norm of x squared and which is basically argument is the norm okay? so the positive arguments were positive here the arguments do not have to be positive okay so basically negative argument allowed that is the whole point because once you start at 0 at 0 
of course it's going to be positive for values greater than 0 of the argument but values less than 0 no right so that's the important thing uh, so this is why it's a sort of uh, this is the sort of extension of if you remember Lyapunov functions are always positive definite and how was positive definiteness defined by comparing it with a class k function right now we compare this barrier functions with a class extended class k function okay this gives us flexibility on both sides right there it was the function was always positive so the Lyapunov candidate was of course always positive here the function can also be negative so therefore this function can also go negative okay. that's the whole point here all right okay so uh, suppose you have uh, again a definition so zeroing z b f is the zeroing barrier function how do we define it yeah uh, so this is h belongs to c1 is a z b f uh, for set c yeah we have defined the set c the safe set right uh, if there exists uh, extended class k function alpha and set d with c being a subset of d being a subset of rn such that for all x in d l f h x is greater than equal to minus alpha h x okay yeah so remember our dynamics we were looking only at a dynamical system there is no control therefore only lfh no lg and all that huh? so lfh is what just h dot right it's just h dot in the along the trajectories of the system huh? so it's just the direction derivative so what am i saying i'm just saying that there is a larger domain of course the c has to be part of a larger domain and in that larger domain this h dot must be greater than or equal to minus alpha h right now the uh, one of the simplest, uh, so now notice that H itself, the way we have defined C, notice, yeah, we have, de we have defined C, H can, is not stopped from being negative, right, in this definition it does not say H can not be negative or anything like that, right, H can be negative, right, it is, all we, all we are saying is that whenever it, it is greater than or equal to 0, it is the set C. Otherwise, outside the set C, H is potentially negative, right? Because whenever it's positive, it is in the set C. Right? So whenever you're outside, just like here, in these examples, I mean, I, I guess you can see this example itself, right? When uh, when H is positive, x1 is less than phi, plus minus phi. X1 is between plus minus phi. If H is negative, it's outside. Okay, so H negative is allowed, no problem, yeah, okay, great. Now, what do you want? We want H dot to be equal to, uh, greater than equal to minus alpha H. So, this is basically a, uh, this is a, uh, or, or a simplification, or actually this is a generalization that way. This is a generalization of what? you take alpha the, this cla extended class k function as h itself alpha of h is just h yeah because it's it will be 0 at 0 and then increasing on the negative side it will go down no problem straight line basically it's a straight line yeah uh, so if alpha function is taken as the unit function itself then this is the, this is the generalization of this guy so what does this give me so what do you want to do you want to basically maintain h greater than or equal to 0 yeah I hope that is obvious now if I solve this equation what do I get let us look at this equation because solving the this one general one is difficult 
let's try to solve the simpler one what is the solution h of t is acche se batao pura batao tell me everything e to the power of minus gamma t let's say initial time is zero and okay done h not thank you very much this is important h not okay now suppose if starting in c or i should be more precise if x starting in c then what do i know i know that h not x or how do i say h0 h not which is defined as h at x0 is definitely greater than 0 i will say interior of c so h not is positive right because that's how i defined h right so what does this mean implies h t is always greater than 0 and h t goes to 0 as t goes to infinity okay all right so what's the good thing in this case in this case what's the nice thing nice thing is that again i mean it should be obvious to you that x of t is also in c yeah also in the in the interior for all time forget infinity infinity is not in real numbers so x of t is going to remain in the set c so it this definitely this method also made it invariant okay but it has a nice uh, structure right i mean it's a nicer structure there is no reciprocal happening here there it was the h dot is gamma over h here it's gamma times h okay so also nice right so uh, again a similar feature that you will see is that here as you go close to the boundary h is going to go to zero going to go towards zero right therefore by this law as you go close to boundary you will stop moving gamma h is close to zero stop moving right? you stop further increasing or anything yeah if you are far from the boundary h could have large values yeah? it could have large but you are inside the set suppose you are of course if you are inside the set let's assume you are inside the set yeah h is positive okay could have large positive values as you go further in and in the set yeah so h is decaying which means it's being pushed towards the boundary earlier we were looking at everything in the perspective of 1 over h therefore we were thinking the other way around now is the other way around zero is h equal to zero is the boundary so as you are in the interior h is large therefore minus gamma h is large so you can potentially get pushed towards the boundary right because ga h dot equal to minus gamma h is basically going to push you towards the boundary it's going to reduce h right that's fine yeah, you're allowed to explore that region and as you go close to the boundary h is going to become zero you don't further move you've stopped okay so that's the idea that this there's no reciprocal nature here so when you do a control design with this we are of course out of time we will not be able to do a control design and all that but typically uh, constructing these is not easy that's the thing typically how this is done is uh, folks usually solve quadratic program they don't actually uh, what they do is they don't actually uh, they only construct the h and and they put a quadrat these are all quadratic program conditions right if you see these are qp type conditions these are actually qp type. if you don't see also i'm telling you this qp type conditions yeah the, uh, this is like the barrier condition and corresponding there will be a control condition which is going to make states go to zero so there will be a control condition barrier condition and the two are solved simultaneously using a quadratic program using some say i want to minimize control or something like that okay and this uh, so they don't actually uh, solve this by hand analytically so it's not typically easy to solve all of these by hand but the reciprocal ones you can see you can do by hand i would really strongly suggest that for the same sort of example uh, you try to construct these zeroing barrier functions okay also 
all right so why is it called zeroing barrier function because at the boundary we didn't do anything earlier we took a reciprocal right 1 over hx and things like that here we took the h itself as the uh, barrier function h itself is the barrier function right and we were just just ensuring that the h is such that h dot is greater than or equal to minus alpha h okay which means that it has a nice zeroing property yeah the barrier function becomes zero at the boundary because the barrier function and this function are kept the same functions to be honest yeah so the barrier so that's why it's called a zeroing barrier function on the other hand when we took the reciprocal ones at the boundary they explode here they become zero right so it's like you stop moving at the boundary right therefore we will not need large force to push it back typically okay that's the idea so i would really recommend that for some simple example like i tried you try to come up with a zeroing barrier function okay it's essentially this h of x function so that is h dot is greater than or equal to minus alpha h can one can come up with that and so the if you are looking at the control problem there is no difference per se right uh, it's it's all these conditions this condition becomes exactly the same thing just with the control right and this condition becomes Okay. It's just like the CLF condition, right? This is the conditions. That's all. It's just that you have a control term here to play with. Okay. This helps you in the design. In the control case, you have a control term now, and you can play with the control so that with whatever b you have or whatever uh, h you have, with using this control, you can get this. That's the whole idea. Yeah. I would strongly recommend you try because that's what we did. Right? We did the control problem. i will post this article and you can take a look yeah there are rather nice articles the entire field of uh, bipedal robot walking is now relies on this okay uh, they this is the aaron ames's group um, and these guys are pretty much experts at it okay all right okay